Hi, I would like to share some of the miracle connections, communications that I have experienced with various animals over the years. And what I'd like, I'd like to speak today about a coyote named Mindy. Mindy was at the San Diego Zoo Park and they had been attempting to train her to lead so that she could be taken as an ambassador for coyotes to a zoo in outside of Los Angeles and walk around and allow people to touch her and be more friendly with um, coyotes who are often considered as varmints. And I had been working with various animals at the zoo for a zookeeper's conference. And so I was asked to work with Mindy and I was told that they had had no success at training her. And I had to be very careful because we wanted to make, they wanted to make sure that she did not feel that she was the dominant one. So there was a platform in this uh, enclosure that was up a, about chest high for me. And they said, don't let her get up on the platform because she will feel dominant. So you will actually, I did let her get up on the platform, but I want to tell you how I approached her which was I'd never done before. And I just, I did it because um, I wanted her to know that I honored and respected her and she was in charge. The question for me with her, how could we develop a communication and a relationship that would be interesting to her? Because coyotes are very curious creatures. So what I did was instead of walking, opening the gate and walking into the enclosure, I opened the gate and I think the area she was in was maybe, maybe 20 feet long and possibly 10 feet wide. And so I opened the gate and I got down on my hands and knees and I crawled in and then I turned my back to her and I lay down and rolled around a little bit. <laughs> and of course she was like, what, who are you? And so she came up and just sniffed me, touched me. And I, I talked to her without looking right at her and just had a little connection. So then I, I crawled out and closed the gate and just walked a little ways away. And of course she's thinking, hmm, who is this person? So I opened the gate again, a few minutes later, crawled in again, crawled around, rolled around. And then, um, she was really curious about me. So I stood up then, and of course it was natural for her to get up on that platform. And um, so I let her get up there and I started with um, like a, a little rubber, piece of a rubber hose so that I could reach out and touch her. And um, at first, like she said, nah, don't touch me, don't do this. But I just quietly started kept talking to her and touching her. You can see this here. And she's like taking her mouth and trying to keep me from touching her. So I had two of these uh, pieces of hose in my hand so I could be like distracting her. I was touching her with the right hand and then with the left hand doing these one and a quarter circles on her body. So take a look and then at the next slide. You'll see then she was standing up and I had reached back and worked along her back. And when I came to a place on her hind leg here, you see, she took her mouth and she was going, uh, just these little, really interesting communication movements. Like <laughs> I was not, I didn't, I couldn't tell if she's saying stop that or that feels good. I don't know, but I just kept going and she's looking at me. And that's when she did that little, movement on my hand, which was a, a very sweet movement. It's, I didn't have the feeling she was pushing away. I had the feeling that she was like, Ooh, interesting connecting. So there's much more to the story. So I, unfortunately we don't have the photos, but what I did was take a towel and I just kind of played like a cat, you know, took it and, and just kind of dragged it along and pulled it a little. and. If you've ever seen a coyote go after a mouse in the field, it's so interesting. They leap up and like they want to play with it. So she followed and she grabbed the towel 
and then took her, her teeth and I just did enough of a little shake that she would pull. And so she pulled and then she started moving like her head and wanting to lead me. So I let her pull, lead me around. And then I'd ask her, oh, can you come with me? Just a couple of steps. And then she'd take me and I'd follow her. And we started playing in this way. Then I took a little cord. And if you look at the last picture that we have, um, this you'll see a very small cord around her neck. And I had it tied so it couldn't slip. But I didn't tie it around her neck at first. I started then after the towel playing with that. And then I laid it over her neck. And then I, I didn't tie it, I just opened it and we just started kind of moving. She would move in her direction. And then I'd ask her, can we go in this direction? And um, she did. And I think I was in there not more than a whole hour. And the connection that we developed with us was very special. And I could actually lead her around. And what happened, I, of course, you don't normally know what happens. Did she go to the zoo, what, whatever, I mean, to the, yeah, so that she could be the ambassador. But the story didn't end there. Approximately 20 years later, I was a keynote presenter at a National Zookeepers Conference in Rhode Island. And I had these pictures with me. And one of the zookeepers came up to me after and said that she had known Mindy, that was her name, when she was quite a bit older. And she was at a small zoo um, so, uh, north of San Francisco in the San Fernando Valley, being the ambassador and just, you know, really pleasant with people. And I just thought this was such a blessing. To me, she's always in my heart. And I want to present this because, hey, you all, so many people, they're worried that their cats and small dogs are going to be eaten by coyotes. That's a question of a management for us. They were there before we were. And for us to honor the animals in our lives. This is the reason I'm wearing this headband because it's to honor Mother Earth and the animals. And I have this beautiful tree behind me. When we talk to the trees as though they can hear, understand us, and when we open our hearts to our animals and show our appreciation, we do make a difference on the planet. So join me in these heart hugs, one and a quarter circles in an imaginary clock on our chest and just sending out gratitude, thanks for the animals on the planet and for the animals who live with us in our lives. Join me in celebrating the magic of animals in our lives. Blessings.